A found footage movie so realistic, the director got charged with murder. And it only gets weirder from there. A found footage film that needs no introduction, Daniel Myrick and Eduardo Sanchez's The Blair Witch Project claims to tell the story of three student filmmakers who disappeared after trekking into the Black Hills near Burkittsville, Maryland, to film a documentary about a local legend. One of the most successful independent films ever, given its no-budget origins, The Blair Witch Project holds up as a terrifying paragon of found footage horror. It's also the movie responsible for popularizing the format. Much of the film's success can be traced back to the highly convincing nature of its cinema verite presentation. Heather, the crew's director, works with a color camcorder, while cinematographer Josh operates a 16mm black-and-white camera and Mike handles the sound. Together, this trio's footage makes up everything audiences see, from unsettling stick figures hanging in the trees to ominous sounds that ring out as the crew becomes hopelessly lost in the forest. The film has an insidious way of weaponizing the audience's imagination leaving the exact nature of its terrors ambiguous, so the audience can fill in the blanks. I'm scared to close my eyes. I'm scared to open them. A watershed moment for the found footage format, Oren Pelly's paranormal activity made a strong first impression at festivals by sparking audience walkouts, as many viewers felt too frightened to keep watching. Its theatrical release proved such a sizable success that the film, which was shot for just $15,000, is generally considered the most profitable movie ever made, and six sequels of varying quality have followed. Few horror films since have matched the full-force tension of the first paranormal activity, in which couple Mika and Katie set up a camera to surveil the otherworldly presence haunting their home. Pelly's choice to use stationary camera placements invites the audience to search every inch of the frame for terrors that are hidden in plain sight. Mounted on tripods around the house, these static cameras contribute to a near-constant sense of dread, locking the audience in for whatever frights a given night might have in store. There's footsteps in, but there's no footsteps out. Oh, God! Though the entity that's attached itself to Katie starts out small, paranormal activity builds an intensity until it reaches a conclusion that ranks among the scariest in cinematic history. It involves Katie, either sleepwalking or possessed, standing next to the bed staring at a slumbering Mika. Two hours pass on fast forward as she sways motionless and the audience looks on helplessly. Gleefully sending up the Ghost Hunters reality TV craze of the early 2000s, Grave Encounters is one of the lesser-known found footage films on this list, but earns its place through sheer commitment to its central concept. Just moments ago, in this very hallway, we captured undeniable proof of the paranormal. The plot centers around a production crew that voluntarily locks themselves inside an abandoned mental hospital in hopes of documenting some spooky and unexplained phenomena. Writer-directors Colin Minahan and Stuart Ortiz, together known as the Vicious Brothers, manage to wring genuine suspense out of this somewhat jokey premise. Spectral forces torment the crew subtly at first, then more intensely. One character goes missing in the night, and the daybreak so eagerly awaited by the characters never comes, as the crew is drawn deeper into an impossible maze of shadowy hallways and unmarked tunnels. What becomes clear through these distortions of time and space is that the characters have stumbled across a spirit realm one that does not tolerate the kind of silly provocations a reality show requires. Grave Encounters wasn't particularly well-received upon its release, but horror fans have reassessed the film positively in recent years. 1980's Cannibal Holocaust is one of the most controversial films ever made, but its early use of found footage laid the groundwork for every other film on this list. Supposedly consisting of real, unedited footage shot by a documentary film crew that went missing in the Amazon while on a mission to film indigenous cannibal tribes, Italian director Ruggiero Diodato's film still revolts audiences today. With its relentless barrage of staged murders, sexual assaults, and unstaged animal killings, the film is forthright about presenting its character's so-called exploration as gruesome, barbaric exploitation. We have succeeded in establishing, shall we say, diplomatic relations with the Yakumas, but what are we for them? As a critique of tabloid journalism and sensationalized TV news reporting, Cannibal Holocaust can be read as one long, sick joke. However, Diodato's impressive filmmaking makes the film as tough to ignore as it is to stomach. No other film on this list can claim to have landed its filmmaker in a courtroom, but that was the ordeal endured by Diodato who premiered the film in Milan and was arrested shortly thereafter on obscenity and murder charges. 
he was convicted on the obscenity charges, but getting the actors he'd ostensibly murdered to show up in court was enough to beat the murder rap. Adam Robitel has emerged as a steady hand in the Hollywood horror world, handling the fourth Insidious movie and helming the budding Escape Room franchise. However, his best film to date remains 2014's The Taking of Deborah Logan. A thought-provoking found-footage horror film about the ravages of Alzheimer's, this flick doubles as a cruelly effective supernatural freakout. What, what is of interest is that this is of an educational nature. That interests me. When an elderly woman agrees to let a film crew document her deteriorating state of mind, none of them are prepared for what follows. Atmospheric, well-paced, and genuinely unsettling, the taking of Deborah Logan is unusually sophisticated in the way its format shifts with the story. The footage becomes more frantic as the crew changes the focus of their film from a medical documentary to a chronicle of the unexplained incidents surrounding their subject. By the time that the film crew tracks Deborah to a menacing mineshaft where young girls were murdered in a cannibalistic ritual many years earlier, the taking of Deborah Logan has relinquished all pretenses of journalistic remove. The result is one of the more forcefully nerve-shredding found footage finales in recent years. At the beginning of the pandemic, filmmaker Rob Savage decided to make a horror film that reflected the forced isolation and virtual connectivity of the COVID-19 era. Savage enlisted a crew of actors who worked remotely to shoot scenes for Host, a horror movie about friends who decide to perform a seance over Zoom. Okay, this might sound really silly, but can I potentially contact a dead pet? Yeah. Unfortunately, the call invites supernatural mayhem into their homes. Lean, mean, and brutally effective, this 56-minute fright fest wastes little time before subjecting its characters to a rapidly escalating series of demonic intrusions. What makes Host such an unusually clever and exciting found-footage film is the imagination with which Savage exploits the specific anxieties of the lonely and perpetually online. For all the time people commit to speaking with friends over an internet connection, no one can intervene if something terrible happens in someone's private physical space. Stephen Cognetti's 2015 gem, Hell House LLC, follows a documentary crew's efforts to uncover the truth about an unexplained malfunction that led to the deaths of 15 patrons and staff on the opening night of a Halloween haunted house tour. Interviewing the only surviving staff member, the crew was entrusted with never-before-seen footage shot by Hell House employees. Cognetti's film leaps backward in time, depicting the lead-up to the night of the tragedy, as Hell House team members sort through cobwebs and creepy clown dolls to set up their attraction inside the abandoned Abaddon Hotel. As opening night approaches, Hell House LLC ratchets up the tension, offering a unique look behind the scenes of horror as smart-alecky team members make the audience gather props to stage scenes. It's a really great mask, and I, I just don't think we should waste it on a dummy it doesn't move. Only to notice that they have inexplicably moved out of place. This game of who's spooking who builds to a series of blood-curdling reveals in the film's third act as the Hell House itself becomes a more active participant in the terror. What if a house wasn't just haunted, but somehow predatory? Hell House LLC is so fiendishly well executed that it fully sells this freaky premise, and repeat watches reveal extra scares, functioning on an almost subliminal level. One of the most high-profile found footage films in recent years, Cloverfield follows five New York residents forced to flee as a massive creature rises out of the ocean and lays waste to the city. As the protagonists move through crumbling skyscrapers and decimated New York landmarks, shaky cam techniques immerse the viewers in their frantic, sustained efforts to escape the inner city carnage. Matt Reeves, working in tandem with producer J.J. Abrams, keeps the Cloverfield monster off-screen for hefty portions of the film, in favor of lingering shots of bloodied civilians stumbling out of the rubble and other gritty aftermath of the destruction. The filmmakers achieve the film's most terrifying sequence when the characters climb one skyscraper to rescue their friend from another that's collapsed against it. Oh is that Beth's apartment? Oh my God. Rob, is that her place? Tell me that's not her place. Though the central monster is a terrifying sight, Cloverfield more boldly evokes images reminiscent of the aftermath of the 9-11 attacks many of which were taken by horrified bystanders without a lens wide enough to capture the extent of the destruction. South Korean filmmaker John Bon Cheek is the force behind this hair-raising 2018 roller coaster of a film. 
Gonjam Haunted Asylum centers on a crew of volunteer YouTubers, overseen remotely by a team leader, who break into the notoriously haunted titular asylum, hoping to score enough freaky footage to drive up view counts for their horror web series. What helps to set Gonjam Haunted Asylum apart from other similar films is the slickness of its presentation. The characters utilize modern technology to shoot their videos, and all of them are professionally trained, allowing for smooth, graceful camera movements that make sense within the story. Zhang also ladles on the ominous, shadow-soaked atmosphere, establishing a deep, dark labyrinth of abandoned corridors for his increasingly fearful characters to traverse. Amusingly, as the protagonists encounter both real supernatural forces and pranks staged by the team leader, Gonjam Haunted Asylum heightens its realism by switching between point-of-view shots and first-person close-ups that mirror the feel of a video upload. Innovative techniques such as these ultimately elevate the film's scares, creating about as authentically harrowing a live-streamed horror as you're likely to find.